Yeah, I got you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yep. We really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> to kick us off, why don't you, um, <clears throat> so you guys are running a special paint scheme this weekend, one that um, is kind of really a throwback in honor of, of your career as, as a driver. Just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, really what that means to you to be able to see that car back on the track. Well, obviously, definitely special uh, for me. I was young in my career, uh, 18 years old, and just starting in my second year of actually driving a super late model. So, um, you know, I was pretty young, naive, didn't know a whole lot and probably still don't, but um, the young parts I've uh, aged a little bit. So, uh, you know, of course, as you grow older, you, um, you know, you achieve new things and, um, you know, you, you kind of question, I, I wouldn't say question, you, you don't really think about what you're doing in, in the current moment. Um, and at the time and really if it's even right to get you to where you want to be. So kind of looking back over the scheme or the last few weeks and, uh, you know, month or so now has uh, it's, it's kind of been a, a great reflection of that and um, a great reminder for all of us who probably been in a job or, or you know, uh, pursuing a dream as long as, uh, you know, I have been in the sport and, you know, you, you sometimes question the, the initial reason why, and, and this has kind of sparked some, um, you know, great emotion about, you know, how, how young and, and crazy it was to have a dream and, and, and eventually follow it through. So um, ultimately, you know, this paint scheme, you know, it, it meant a lot at the time. Uh, and it really took time for me to really appreciate it just because of, you know, how it came about and, and how it, the paint scheme kind of chose me. Um, you know, and ultimately, you know, the sacrifice Jane Pagel uh, gave and, and I eventually kind of ran that same color scheme or color uh, as he did in 93. So. Awesome. Well, I know it'll be great to see it on the track this weekend. We're going to go straight to questions so we can maximize as much time with you as we can. And to kick us off, we're going to go to Bob Hawkers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Greg, uh, can you what does having that scheme, you know, mean to you? You know, I mean, fans will see and they'll be like, oh, that's nice, you know, great guys. But like from just a personal standpoint. Yeah, like, like I said, personally, you know, it's, you know, I, I, was, I was pretty shocked. And, and you know, I, I'm not one that really likes to, to be in the spotlight. Um, you know, I, I try to elevate others around me versus trying to, 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 to do that to myself. So I, I was a little embarrassed. Uh, uh, kind of when it was unveiled to me and, and you know, Alex had that uh, surprise for me. So, you know, but ultimately, you know, brought back a lot of uh, great memories of, of just, you know, being young and, and not knowing a whole lot and um, ultimately, you know, setting your goals and your sights on, on something that maybe wasn't achievable, but in, in the end, I, I knew if I put a, a, enough hard work behind it and, and passion and, um, you know, eventually people would uh, believe in me. And, you know, I had great family members around me, uh, a lot of aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, brothers and sisters that supported uh, me along the way and, and eventually friends that became pit crew members and, and hopefully can look at this paint scheme and, and enjoy it along the way as well. So just, just a, lot of, a lot of pride in, in you, know, you know, where I started and, and how I came about through the you know, super late model, uh, uh, the, you know, grassroots type of racing and, and probably not with a lot of money and probably not with a lot of driving talent, but I persevered because of my interest and, and my love for cars and, uh, you know, the math uh, behind them and physics behind them all. So ultimately, I, I think that's what, um, you know, as, as I work on the car today, I uh, kind of feel all those same emotions and, you um, you know, the work's never done, but you just kind of got to get them loaded and, and ready to go. Uh, when working on the car for Darlington, are you or stu studying up? Are you looking at last year because the tires are the same or 2018 because that's when the package is more similar? I, I think you got to take it all in, you know, 2018. Yeah, the, definitely the package was very similar. Um, you know, tires changed. Our, our performance as a company has changed. So, um, you know, some of that stuff that we were maybe, you know, kind of, kind of handicapping ourselves or, or, um, 
you know, we're, we're trying to have to uh, overcome some deficits in, in either aero or mechanical uh, grip set, setting uh, for the tires that we had. So uh, we're just trying to be smart about it. Look at some other races where we may have done that, um, you know, downforce change and, and maybe not the, the, the engine package change, but kind of just understand all of it and, uh, you know, put our best uh, foot forward when we come down to uh, Darlington here on Sunday. Okay, our next question is going to come from David Smith. Go ahead, David. Hey, Greg. In speaking with uh, some of the Row AI guys, they uh, they held you up as a, a model user of their software and said you do a good job uh, strategizing yourself. And uh, you have what is quantifiably the fast pit crew right now in the series. Was all of this a design to make this your team's identity because that is what it seems to be relative to other teams. And do you think this is a big enough strength on its own to potentially carry you to the championship for? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of live by um, the fact that strategy and, and getting onto pit road and off of pit road um, as cleanly, cleanly, as efficiently as possible is a great way to make up time and spots and, and spend a lot of time, you know, working with the pit crew and, and driver and, um, you know, even the engineers behind it to, to maximize the points or the, the positions and also the time. But ultimately, as you're doing that, you can also hurt yourself. Um, you can you get a little greedy. Um, you can cost yourself more time by speeding or, or getting on pit road and missing the, the, you know, commitment cone or, or, you know, having a mistake, um, with the pit crew and, you know, and, and that all comes from allowing all the people involved to, uh, work within their own strengths, uh, work within their own capabilities and, and not apply, applying the pressure to say, Hey, we need to be, we need to continuously be better, but we don't need to continuously, uh, jump past the line keep pushing that th threshold of comfort, uh, that threshold of chaos is as we probably can, can probably call it, um, and then be comfortable there. And, and uh, more that we do that, uh, whether it's, you know, there's always uh, anxiety when you short pit, uh, there's always anxiety if you run long, you know, so there's, there's always that anxiety. And if, if you're more comfortable in, in those situations and, and know that, okay, well, you know, if I get caught, a caution comes and I short pit, I understand, you know, what it is that I, we're capable of doing to get out of it. Or, um, you know, our, our pit crew, like you said, has been really solid. I think it's consistency, uh, not so many much the home runs uh, all the time or the mistakes. It's the fact that they're consistent and they're consistent at a high level. Um, and, you know, as far as Alex, he's, if you continue to study his driver data, uh, continuously get better. So, it's a, it's a big focus, um, you know, just because there's, there's time to be had. Um, and, you know, yes, performance on the racetrack on, in a lap time is, is definitely important. Um, but when you, when you have to pit eight to 10 times a, a week, um, maximizing that is, is definitely important. And I hope I'm answering your question, right? If not, <laughs> you can ask, ask me again. <laughs> No, all, all good. Um, one follow-up, you know, given the, uh, uh, the importance of Martinsville and Phoenix based on where they are at on the schedule, do you feel that your team specifically is already well-suited for those tracks? And if not, where, where is your room for growth? Yeah. Uh, if you would have asked me that at the beginning of the year, I'd say absolutely not. Um, you know, Phoenix, we struggled uh, after having a lot of success at. So, we always knew the mark was there. We always knew the potential was there for our team to excel at that type of track. Um, but it's kind of what have you done for me lately type of thing. And, and we struggled. Um, and, and um, you know, that's been an issue for us. And same with Martinsville. We continuously um, haven't had the best uh, of finish the finishes there. Um, not bad, obviously, but, you know, to contend, like you said, um, you know, as the champion uh, last year did, you know, he won at both of those races. So uh, I feel like um, Phoenix this year, we had a good car, not a car capable of winning. Uh, so we definitely need to improve there. 
uh, if we want to have a, a chance or a battle at this championship. Um, but Martinsville, I, I felt like we were in position uh, with the with uh, at the end of the race. Uh, we we're positioned as far as our uh, strategy, uh, positioned as far as the speed in the car, and, and ultimately could have went out and and outright won that race. So um, we had a mistake on pit road, and and just like I talked about earlier, you know, not typically that's not what our, our, our pit crew and, and, and what we look at is, you know, the mistakes, it's more about consistency. So um, got a lot a ways to go at Phoenix, but Martinsville, we're definitely feeling a lot better about. Right, thank you. Okay, our next question is gonna come from Mark Garrett. Mark, did you get your question answered? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm re yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go here. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Hey, Greg, just shifting gears a little bit with the Next gen car unveil yesterday. I'm just curious, how do you balance this out down towards the end of the season when the testing is going? You know, there's going to be some open testing. Uh, it'll be in and around the start of the playoffs and probably throughout the playoffs here and there. How do you? How are you going to balance out developing for next year at the same time you're trying to win a championship? Yeah, it's definitely uh, you know it, it's definitely something that's going to. Um, you know, take away some, some focus, uh, for sure. Um, but you know, at Hendrick Motorsports, we have a lot of great resources and, um, you know, a lot of great people to, to keep you focused on the right areas. Uh, you know, that's part of my job as the crew chief is try to be at a little higher level and not, not totally in, into the microscope and, and all, in all the details, but, you know, understanding the, the, the ideas behind, uh, development, the ideas behind performance, um, and, and also uh, give some guiding uh, instruction and information to, you know, make us better. So definitely going to be, a, I wouldn't say a distraction, but definitely going to be something that, you know, I want to be involved with. Um, and, and I have learned over the years of how to, how to balance that uh, quite well. Just, you know, just looking back at the seasons that we used to test a lot and, and yeah, it might've been development for that type of, um, you know, car or that configuration, but, you know, it, it was maybe a different racetrack that than what you actually went to that weekend. So, um, you know, just relying on, on my teammates, uh, putting a lot of trust and faith in what, uh, their capabilities and, and their, their talents are. Um, but, also giving, you know, my input when, when needed. And, and, you know, like, like I said, we have great resources here at Hendrick Motorsports that um, I have all the faith in the world and everybody in charge of that uh, department and, and getting us where we need to be. What's it going to be like to go to all these single suppliers in the sense that you have a team of engineers now working on a frames and, and, and you're mm -hmm. always trying to come up with the next best thing. What's it going to be like to have a car where it's limited what you can, you know, everybody's got the same parts and pieces. What's, what's that going to be like? That seems so foreign to what you guys have done in the past where you're always trying to develop your own thing to beat the, beat the next guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I look back at grassroots racing, uh, the, the majority of teams, yeah, they may be able to spec and get different uh, items from different areas, but, you know, ultimately if you had a, Pathfinder chassis or, um, you know, a left-hander or Port City or something like that, you know, they had their general idea of, of what, what came along with that race car. And yeah, you're able to develop and, and, and go on from there. But, um, you know, ultimately it became, that became the challenge of, is how do I take uh, what is given to me, uh, optimize it and uh, get it to the next level. And, you know, I think that's, that's, what's going to be a, a great challenge is, you know, you're going to be <laughs> given this car and, and, and these parts and be like, how can I make it better? And ultimately within the rules and understanding, you know, um, assembly and, and just performance and, and how we can continuously test um, these items versus just bolting them together. So um, that's going to be a, a, a great challenge in, in, you know, something, you know, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm, called the Riddler for a reason. So it's something that I really uh, enjoy to do and, and understand. So um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be different for sure, but uh, you just got to, you got to change your mind up a little bit and go back to maybe some of the things you used to do in the past. 
Okay, our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Uh, uh, Greg, um, with the, the next gen car, how might that change uh, either the role of the crew chief or what a crew chief does, or does it really impact anything? Because at the end of the day, a car is a car and are you, aren't you doing the same thing? Yeah, I, I think in any environment uh, where you have a team and assembly of people, um, keeping them going in the right direction is ultimately what my job is. Yes, you know, my ideas behind what the car should, how the car should perform, things to work on. Um, but, you know, I have a, a group of people underneath me that, you know, rely on my direction on a daily basis and either direction or discipline or, or you know, just, you know, philosophies, and those type of things. And um, you need that leader on the team to go to, um, to, to either, to, to get all that. So I feel like, you know, it's definitely going to be different from the aspect of, you know, hey, let's take this, you know, park piece and, and, and change it and, uh, you know, increase or decrease the compliance or, um, you know, those type of things. But Ultimately, you know, there's still things that are, are going to, you know, as it, I feel like it's going to minimize some of the things that are obvious to change and, and the, the position that we're in, we're able to, you know, give direction to what we feel like is going to add performance on the racetrack and uh, get them focused in that area. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be different, but uh, I don't see much of a change as far as a crew chief role. It, what what is if anything what is changing the the crew chief role what, what's having a greater impact if it since it may be not as much of a car type of thing what's what's changed your role over the last couple of years more than anything so you know as i you know as i've grown within hendrick motorsports i've had a lot of different positions um you know very hands-on at the start um you know as a set as a, a post-race mechanic then as a setup uh plate mechanic and then, you know, engineering, it all became, you know, on the computer, you know, it, it was more about the virtual world and understanding, um, you know, how the, the simulation worked and, and the, the physics behind the car versus just the mechanics of it. Um, as I became a, a crew chief, it, it, uh, my, if I spent too much time on the computer, I wasn't giving enough direction to the people that, um, you know, needed that around me. So, um, it's, it's really come down to a great management role of, of, of talent and, you know, whether it's pit crew, whether it's my engineers, whether it's my car chiefs or, or, or assembling a, a great team of mechanics so that, you know, you know, those guys work together, uh, arm, arm to arm all day long in, in having that environment where they want to come to work. So it's, it's all intertwined and it's not just the computer. It's not just the mechanics. Um, it's ultimately all of it. And it's even more intense because there's no time to fine tune it. There's no time to develop it without, you know, without practice, without qualifying. And, and you're just hitting the ground running and, and finding those avenues of making your team better, making them, um, making the cars better. Um, and ultimately, you know, the, the whole thing uh, work together as, as you want it to. So uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's always, it's always changing, but you know, the mindset's kind of always the same and, and comes down to the performance on the racetrack and how to put your best team together. Thank you. Okay, our next question is gonna come from Anton with ASN Motorsports. Hey, Anton. Thanks, Amanda. Good afternoon, Greg. So Dalton Raceway is uh, a unique track with its narrowness and uh, the turns not similar to each other. Uh, what are the peculiarities that you take into account while setting up the car for the races there? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, Darlington is its own own racetrack, and and ultimately, you know, when when it's it's kind of you know narrow and 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 you know that the characteristic that it is, you, the challenge is finding the ability to run somewhere different to 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 change lanes or to have the car be able to um, not just be a, a single groove car. Obviously, all the time you're going to want to, you know, end up in that lane um, and and try to be fast. But you know, our concentration for a few times have been, hey, how do we 
how, how can we be different um, than the next guy? And, and when you when that happens, either they try to mimic you and, and are not prepared or, um, you know, it, it allows you to uh, make up time um, without trying to be the same, you know, following in somebody's tracks is not always easy at a track, especially if it's uh, aerodynamically sensitive. So, um, you know, getting air, getting uh, a difference of, um, you know, half a lane or, or um, you know, being able to run the bottom in three and four is, is a huge deal if you can make it work. And um, so, yeah, I mean, unique racetracks um, are, 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 are fun, are, are difficult, but um, ultimately uh, trying to work on on, on things that are, are not necessarily not everybody's trying to do. So, um, and, you know, bringing, you know, Kansas, I, I look at Kansas, that's a definitely a difficult racetrack. And, um, but it's also a lot of fun because you have the bottom lane and the top lane and a lot of drivers talk about that. And um, some of the excitement in the driver is because it's, uh, it's unique. So, um, yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope you know what some of the things I talked about uh, we have have in in place and uh, are able to to execute on on Sunday. But uh, ultimately, giving your driver the ability to race the racetrack in in multiple areas um, and, and find a lane or find uh, ways to pass uh, when needed. Thank you. Wishing you all the best for this weekend. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Ashley McKebbin. Go ahead, Ashley. Hey, Greg, thanks for your uh, time today. What's the biggest memory that stands out from your late model career? Oh, I would always have to go back to post-race of, uh, of racing because, um, you know, came from a big family, not all the time that they went to the racetrack, but they are, they're always engaged in racing. And, uh, you know, I, I remember... You know, at the end of the night, we loaded everything up and, and really couldn't wait to get home because I knew that as we entered the door, we'd had fresh popcorn on, on the picnic table and, and, you know, everybody would gather around and, and talk about the night, whether it was your race, a race they watched, you know, how the car felt. And, and that's kind of how, like I said, my mom, you know, with the big family, my mom would stay home a lot with either the grandkids or or, you know, some type of, uh, of reason like that. Um, so it, it was the best way for us to have that conversation and relive the night. Um, some nights were better than others, but ultimately, you know, um, I, I'd say that's probably the best memories of it. Obviously, when you win and you're fast, that's cool and great. Uh, but the reason we did it was because of family. And, you know, Ives Racing was known for that uh, around the area. Like, like I said, I had a lot of a big family on, on my mom's or on my dad's side that uh, supported me a lot and, um, you know, was always in the stands and, and uh, ready to come down after the races into the pits and even, either chat about the night. And then, like I said, going home and knowing my mom was going to be there to, to be able to talk to her about it. And, um, you know, ultimately, <laughs> I, I think she was allowing us to continue to race. So if we're having fun doing it or, or, or those type of things uh she could have easily shut it down. And when did you decide to focus your, take your focus from being a driver to, to being a crew member, crew chief? Well, you know, it was towards the end of my uh, career. Uh, it was 2003 and I was running, running for the championship and was a, in a tight battle with Jamie Iverson, but also at the end of that December, I was graduating college and, you know, I was graduating with a mechanical engineering degree and, um, you know, wasn't quite sure what my path or my goal as far as NASCAR racing was, because it wasn't really, it really wasn't on the radar just because of, you know, being so secluded up there. You know, NASCAR was just something you turned on on TV. It wasn't really part of your, you know, like, like people around Charlotte had it, you know, it wasn't in your back porch, you know, so um, it wasn't until, you know, a family reunion at the end of 2003 in August that, you know, I, I met my dad's cousin and his son-in-law worked for the 24 car and kind of gave him my resume and, you know, kind of, kind of the rest is history. I started at Hendrick um, 
after, after <laughs> I, I had a couple engineering positions offered to me and I, I turned them down just, just waiting and hoping for the opportunity at Hend- Hendrick Motorsports and it worked out. You and Alex seem to have a special friendship, especially with the, um, exemplified by the fact that he chose to run your paint scheme this weekend. What is it about Alex that is different, unique to other drivers that you've worked with? You know, I, I feel like I have a great relationship with all the drivers I have from, you know, Jimmy, Regan, Chase, um, Dale. I mean, even the drivers that are on different teams, I, I feel like um, you kind of have to have that to, to you know, succeed in this sport. And, uh, you know, but with Alex, he he brings a lot of just uh, he's just very open with me. Uh, he doesn't really let things get to him or doesn't really, you know, you know, if he wants to pick on me, he picks on me, like as you probably, guys probably have seen, or or he's serious with me. So it's it's really just a you know open relationship where he has the ability to to be honest. And and if the cars are running great, he lets me know. If they're not, he lets me know. And in in a way that uh, is constructive and allows us to to be better. And I think vice versa. If I tell him you know he needs to click a front brake, he does it. And if I tell him he needs to to work on his entry. Speed, he does it, and and without any type of you know uh, ill, you know I'm not doing it to to put him down. I'm doing it so we're better as, as a team. So I think that's that's the the thing that him and I have the the most in common with is you know and yeah we're you know we're kind of quiet people. Uh, we like to to you know. Be, t- be on our own uh, a little bit. We like working on our cars. We like uh, having our own race teams and, and just working hard. And, um, you know, so a lot of similarities outside of racing that, that we have in common as well. And, um, you know, I kind of get his, his lifestyle and where he came from. So, um, you know, that's, that's highly respected. Um, part of what I think about Alex is I respect the, how he came up and, and, you know, didn't always have things handed to him, but, Um, was given opportunities and made the best of them. Thank you for your time today. Yep. All right, Greg, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, and we really appreciate you spending some extra time with us to get all the questions in. So good luck this weekend in Darlington, and we look forward to seeing you there on Sunday. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.